Okay, so before we begin making the ganache, uh, just a little bit of what we've got in front of me here, just some of the, the ingredients. Well, there's not many ingredients, but uh, we've got chocolate and double cream, and that's all I use, a very, very basic uh, recipe for this ganache. And it's the same recipe I've been using for 12 years, um, and it's, it's done me quite well. So, um, so what we have here is um, shop-bought white chocolate. Um, the reason why I went to the shops to buy this chocolate rather than use the one that I buy from the wholesale is just to show that when you're making white chocolate ganache, um, from home and, you, and all you've got is the supermarkets to use, um, you're best to go and buy the most expensive one that's on the shelf, which I've done. Um, so this one, um, actually this one was normally £2 for 100 grams and it was on special offer as £1.50 for um, 100 grams. Um, and um, normally I would probably pay about 70p for 100 grams. So you can see quite a lot more expensive um, than, than what we, we pay for it. Um, but it's, it's a more expensive one. Uh, don't be tempted to go into the supermarkets and buy their basic white chocolate. It just, it, it's just it's, it's very oily and when you make the ganache, it's just not particularly that nice. Um, so definitely try and buy the more expensive white chocolate ganache for that, okay? Uh, sorry, white chocolate for that. Um, so what we have here, uh, I've started to break some of the chocolate up. You can see there, just, just ripped it apart um, from the packets. Uh, so we have 900 grams of white chocolate and we have uh, 400 grams of double cream um, here. So what you want to do is you want to, now I've, I've tried to keep it as simple as possible for this recipe. Um, sometimes it, it became different weights, so it mills for the, the, the cream and grams for the chocolate or pounds and ounces. So I'm going to stick to grams um, just to make it easy. So you can just put your, simply just put the uh, bowl on the scales, zero it and pour the cream in until you get your 400 grams. Uh, as simple as that. Uh, once you've done that, we then want to pop it in the microwave. Okay, and then just pop that in there like so and then uh, normally you really just want to bring it to the boil so you know maybe four or five minutes in the microwave if you don't have a microwave just pop it on the stove um, until you see it come to the boil okay so let's just see oops uh, so we'll try four minutes I'm used to making big batches, so I'm, I'm not quite sure how long it takes to make a small batch like this. Uh, uh, we, we're normally making uh, quite a lot more than that. Um, so uh, while that's in the, the microwave, uh, I want to just finish opening up the rest of this chocolate. Now, it's quite a warm day today, so um, the chocolate's actually very, very soft. Now this chocolate that I've got, I've never bought this particular brand of uh, the Lindt chocolate before. It says extra irresistibly smooth. So actually the middle chocolate's actually very creamy and smooth, almost like ganache in the centre uh, and it, it actually uh, tastes lovely because we've all had a little bit today. Um, so, um, so yeah, so uh, it'll be interesting uh, to see how it actually sets. Um, preferably I think you're best to try and go for a solid chocolate all the way through. Um, but um, I, think it's, I think it should still work. Uh, lint chocolate always works for me so we'll just see how it goes. Open this one. I was actually, um, where was I? I was working in Cologne. I've got a chocolate factory there and they're actually making lint chocolate in Cologne. So it was quite nice getting to see, see them making it. Now if you get chocolate and it's rock solid or it's in a plastic pack packet, um, just get a, a wooden spoon but it's still in the packet and just bash it. And then when you open it up, it just falls into the into the bowl. But you can see this stuff so soft that I don't have to worry about that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, what we're at now, so we've still got about two minutes. Um, so I'll just wait for that to come to the boil and then when I come back, I'll then bring it out the microwave and show you bring it all together. Okay, so that's just coming up for the, the four minutes. So let's just see how we're doing. Yep, and it's boiling there. So just really watch your hands when you bring the, the cream out. You can see there, it's definitely boiled right up there. So that's brilliant. So what I want to do is just very carefully pour the cream over the chocolate. splash it on my arm. Okay, wasn't good. Right, okay, and there as well. Okay, and then we just want to start to soften it down. 
start mixing it together. Now what will happen is it tends to go like a sort of curdled effect to start with. And you think you've made it wrong. Now just to add, if I'm making lots of ganache, what I do is I pour it in, make sure the, cover, the cream is all covered, uh, covering the chocolate. I put it to one side and I pour the rest of the cream in the next batch and put it in the microwave. And then you come back, uh, the chocolate started to melt on its own anyway. Okay? So, but if you're worried about your precious ganache, then just mix from the start. Now you can use a balloon whisk for this if you want. And if it's purely just for cake decorating, uh, even a hand whisk is fine, an electric hand whisk for that is fine as well. So you can see they really come together. And you want to keep on mixing until there's no lumps. So that's looking good. Okay, so I just want to check. So pull it out and just let it pour down and see if you can see any lumps. It looks pretty pure. Try it again. Yep, I'm happy with that. So just give it one last little mix just to make sure. Yeah, that's fine. So that's it. And that's it. that's it. That's how easy it is to make white chocolate ganache. Now, once you've uh, made that, let it cool. So just put a, a towel over the top of it or um, just something so, this, so that the hot air can escape. Uh, once it's cooled, so just wrap it in cling film, take the wooden spoon out, wrap it in cling film or put it in a giant food bag and just write obviously the date when it was made and then pop it in the fridge. And then that's good to go in the next day. So you want it to set overnight. And then when you bring it out the next day, you can reheat it in the microwave and off you go. Okay, so uh, that's, this is the, the ganache, the white ganache. It's been in the fridge all night, so it's been there for about, um, how long? Maybe sort of 12 hours. Um, now, I've just brought it out about 15 minutes ago, so it's still rock solid, um, so that's, that's, that's perfect. Um, so all we have to do uh, from this stage on is really just try and carve some out. Now, I generally want to leave it out for about 15, uh, sorry, 30 minutes, just so it sort of softens down a little, little bit more. But you can see here, even after just 15 minutes, um, it is quite solid, but you can see there, yeah, so it's still getting scoops out, so that's actually perfect, okay? It smells lovely, it smells really nice and creamy, so that's because it's the most expensive of the white chocolate I could get in the supermarket. So very, very yummy, and it's perfect. In fact, I'm sure um, uh, if you leave it in the fridge too long, it'll not be left anyway for your cake, so I'd just be watching out for that one. Um, and that's it, and it's easy as that.